What's up? Today we are going to talk about creating colliders on our objects so that we can detect collisions within our script. We covered spawning obstacles and moving our spaceship in previous videos. For that reason, I'll be skipping over those parts in this video, but I've linked those parts in the description below for you to check out. Let's go ahead and open up our project in Unity. In our last video, we created a prefab of an asteroid. This asteroid was coded to spawn randomly on the right side of the screen every second. Right now, if we collide our spaceship with an asteroid, nothing happens. The reason for that is because neither our spaceship nor our asteroid have any colliders attached to them. There are several different colliders we can choose from, and the type of collider we choose depends on whether we are working in a 2D or 3D environment. Since we are working in a 2D environment, we will be using strictly 2D colliders. A collider is basically an invisible shape placed around an object that tells Unity where collisions should occur. Most times this is identical to the shape of the object, but it can be altered to function the way you would like. There are a lot of different colliders to choose from, and you can see all of them by selecting Add Component and then typing Colliders in the search bar. Most of these colliders can be pretty processor intensive, so I try to only use Box, Sphere, and Capsule Colliders when working in 3D, and the Box and Circle 2D Colliders when working in 2D. But for the purpose of this game, I'll only be using Box and Circle 2D Colliders in this video but feel free to try them all and decide which one works best for you. First, let's go ahead and add a circle collider to our asteroid. Since our asteroid is a prefab, let's just drag it into our scene to modify its properties. Then let's go to Add Component and select Circle Collider 2D. You'll notice after this is done that a green circle is placed over our object, but is only visible in scene view and is not shown in our game. This green outline indicates the boundaries of our collider. We can then adjust this outline to fit the needs of our game. Personally, I like to shrink the circle collider inside our object to give it a smaller hitbox. I do this because it makes the game run a lot smoother. You're probably also wondering why our circle collider doesn't fully cover our object. Personally, when objects are flying at you at a fast rate, your eye won't notice the edge-to-edge -edge physics and the game will actually run a lot smoother. If you're making a game where edge-to-edge -edge physics are crucial, I recommend switching to a polygon collider which will match the exact shape of your object. Make sure you press apply after you are finished to apply the changes that we just made to our prefab. Afterwards, you can remove the asteroid from the scene. Then go ahead and let's do the same thing to our spaceship. We could easily use a polygon collider for this but I've actually had better luck using a combination of square and circle colliders. So first, let's add a circle collider. I'm going to position this so that it is only on the front side of our spaceship, leaving the tip of the spaceship without a hitbox. Again, so that we give the player a better game experience. Next, let's add a box collider 2D, but let's only use this to cover our wings and the back of our spaceship. If done correctly, when we press play, we should see our asteroids and spaceship bounce off each other when they collide. Now this is cool, but I actually want my spaceship to only detect collision and not actually do anything. This is because when the spaceship hits an asteroid, I want there to be an explosion and I want the level to start over. For this reason, I'm actually going to check the box next to is trigger for both of my colliders on my spaceship. Is trigger basically means that collision will be detected, but the objects physically won't interact in any way. So then to read this collision in our code, let's create a new script on our spaceship object, and let's call this ship. We won't be using start or update, so we can go ahead and remove those lines from the code. Then let's use a predefined function called on trigger enter 2D, and in parentheses, let's define collider 2D as other. 
We are working in a 2D environment, but if you are detecting collisions for 3D, this function will still work. Just remove 2D in both of these places. Now anytime an object that has a collider attached to it enters the collider on the spaceship, this function will be executed. We can test this by writing debug.log and then putting hit detected in parentheses. Then when we collide with an object, we should see it recorded in our console window. Now that we know that our hit detection is working, let's modify our script to spawn an explosion whenever our spaceship collides with an asteroid. I have already created an explosion prefab to use for our scene that starts animating the minute it is loaded onto the scene. After the animation completes, it executes a function that restarts the scene. So now let's go back into our script and load this prefab whenever our objects collide. The first thing we want to do is create a reference for our explosion prefab by writing public game object explosion. Then like in our last video, let's use instantiate to load it onto our scene. We will use the letter E as our reference for this explosion object. Then let's set the explosion's object's position to equal the same position as our spaceship. We can do this by writing e.transform.position equals transform.position. When we press play, we should see our explosion animation load on top of our spaceship, but the spaceship and asteroid remain on the screen for a few seconds before the scene is eventually reloaded. Instead, we want to remove the objects on impact, so let's go back into our code and add those parts. Underneath our transform.position line, let's go ahead and add destroy and then put other.gameObject in parentheses. This will remove our asteroid from the scene. Since our spaceship is referenced in other scripts, the scene would error out if it no longer existed. So instead of destroying it, we are going to want to just hide it. We can do this by writing this.gameObject.setActive and then put false in the parentheses. This will disable our game object, but it won't remove it from the scene, which is important because our scripts will still be able to reference it, but it won't interact with the scene in any way. Well, there you have it. You just successfully built a collision detection script. If you found this tutorial useful, let me know by liking this video and commenting below. Then be sure to subscribe to not only support this channel, but to be notified anytime a new tutorial is released. Thanks for watching.